Welcome to Precision Pilot, an aviation channel focused around flying unique airplanes, building, updating, and maintaining aircraft, and adventures in aviation. Greetings. We're out in the hangar, have the cowl off, and today we'll be working on the Bing carburetors used on the Rotex 912 power plant. I think the 912 is a phenomenal aircraft engine, and the Bing carburetors used on it do require a bit of maintenance and inspection from time to time, or unfortunately, maybe you develop a little engine roughness out in the field when you're flying, and having some skills to inspect them might make the difference between you getting on your way versus spending the night waiting for a mechanic somewhere. So in this video, we'll cover some basic items such as how to remove the carburetor slightly to gain access to the fuel bowl, removing the fuel bowl, inspecting the fuel bowl, inspecting the floats, both in a simple visual check as well as a more scientific method. I'm going to install some aftermarket upgrade floats. We'll talk a little bit about that. We'll also touch on mechanically balancing the carburetors. And then lastly, I'll share a little bit about some tools and techniques to make this job a whole lot easier and what you might want to consider carrying with in the plane to help address this if you had to deal with it out in the field. Let's dive in. I zoomed in here on the carb. One of the things you always want to look at when the cowl's off are your drip trays. I noticed I had some fuel residue accumulating on here, so that was a sign I might have a heavy float issue. I've since cleaned it up, but that's what you want to look for. To remove the bowl, it's sometimes a little difficult based on your engine and aircraft type on how much space you have with the drip trays here. So, Take a screwdriver, loosen up the socket quite a bit because there's an undercut that needs to pop out. You want that good and loose. Disconnect your vibration dampening spring. And then you can grab the carb by the top, the air intake, the bowl, any of the good solid structural parts of the carburetor, but be careful not just to grab it and manhandle it. These linkages are somewhat delicate and can be bent and tweaked. So to preserve your carburetor settings and your synchronization, just don't start reefing on things. Make sure you're grabbing it by the bowl, the top, or I like to even grab the air intake. And understand your fuel line's still connected, so there's some resistance. But the idea is we want to pop the carb out of the socket and I usually just kind of twist and rock and pull. And just like that, you'll see it pops up and out. And that's all we want to do is get enough space between here and the drip tray to get access to that bowl. Now, the bale that's on the bottom of the carburetor bowl to retain it, that can be very difficult. You, you don't have much finger room. And I hate going at things with screwdrivers and jacking it up. So there's two ways you can go about it. I've got a screwdriver that I special purposely bent so that you can kind of knife in there and then twist to get a little separation. But another uh, fellow Rotex guy on my aircraft forum recommended using a crescent wrench. And these are like voodoo, right? You hate crescent wrenches for stuff. But for this application, it's perfect because you can adjust it to the exact thickness of that bale get it on there tight and then you can use that as a lever arm so if you get it down maybe towards the bottom and then you put a rotation movement in it just like that that bale swings up and over perfect tool for the job sometimes crescent wrenches have a purpose on an aircraft not often but in this case it's sweet so We'll take this over to the uh, tool cart. With the bowl removed, the first thing we want to look for are our floats. And the pins on the side of them are below the surface of the fuel. They should be at the, the level of the fuel in the bowl. So that's a sign they're heavy. So we'll pop them out of there. And then take a look at our bowl. First, I'll get rid of the fuel. We want to ensure that the bottom of the bowl here is nice and clean. 
This is a casting, so it can develop a white corrosion, or there could be debris or crap that's come out of the fuel system, you know, rubber uh, fuel hoses degrade, whatnot. Many sources of possible particulate or contamination. So that's a good clean bowl. That's what we want to see. So we'll dry the fuel off of the floats, and we'll weigh them. That one weighs 3.4 grams. 4.2, very heavy. And the combined, 7.5 grams. So we're over spec. Rotex specifies the combined floats together shouldn't be over 7 grams. And I like to see them balanced kind of in weight as well. So we know that these are out of spec and need to be replaced. Instead of going with the same Bing Rotex material and floats, I've opted to go with these Marvel Shevler aftermarket floats. They're made from an epoxy resin, more resistant to fuel, and their weights appear to be really decent. I'm seeing 5.5, 5.6 grams on that pair, 5.5 on that pair. So they're, they're right on the money as far as a, a weight. So we'll put those back in and move on to the next step. It's important to note the Rotex floats can go in either orientation, either side. There's kind of mistake proof to their, their geometry. These obviously have a shape to them, and the pyramid goes up like that for installation. To reinstall the bowl, sometimes the gasket on the bottom of the carb to the bowl falls out when you remove it. And there's a track that it fits up in. And this gets a lot of people in trouble. They'll pull a carb bowl, inspect things, put it back, and they don't realize that that's out of the track. It gets pinched. They crank the bale in there, it destroys the gasket, and next thing you know, you got a fuel leak and, and you're screwed. So not just feeling around and looking to make sure it's where it belongs. I like to take an inspection mirror and walk underneath all the way around, make sure that it's all tucked in right where it belongs, and you're not going to screw things up when you put the bowl back. So a double check to make sure we've got our floats oriented correctly. Everything's clean, no debris. We're going to bring that back in and very gingerly so that gasket doesn't fall out, bring that up. Give it a little wiggle jiggle, twist it around, make sure it's fully seated and that gasket hasn't slipped. And then bring that bale down with your thumb, slam it forward. If by chance you can't get it with your fingers, a pair of pliers to pinch it right on the center to seat it is uh, all you need for a tool. Well, that went real smooth. Now all we have to do is pop the carb back into the socket. Again, twist, push, seat, but don't be reefing on your levers. That's fully seated, and it's as simple as that. So to this point, we've covered removing the carburetor to gain access, removing the bowl, inspecting the bowl, inspecting the floats, and reinstalling things. And we've put our vibration dampening spring back in place. So we're right back to where we started now. The last thing I'll cover in this video is balancing the carbs. There's two means to balance the carburetors. There's a pneumatic balance, which requires the engine to be running using vacuum gauges in the cross tube between the manifolds. And there's a lot of information out there on that. But I find a simple mechanical balance is all that these require from time to time. It can be a seasonal thing, maybe every six months or so, give it a check and look at it. But essentially, we're looking at the linkages, the stops, and how that works with the relative throttle movement between the right and left carburetor. The Rotex carburetors, by default, have a spring which take them to full wide open throttle if anything becomes disconnected as a safety feature. So we want to let me open up the cabin here. The controls in the cabin are set up so that when the throttle's all the way closed, these are all the way shut. 
then all the way open, these are all the way open. So you really can't discern anything when these are at their full extremes as far as a balance because everything's at their hard stops. The carburetors in the engine controls in the plane. So what we want to do is very gradually creep open the throttle in the plane to where one of these on either one of the carburetors begins to crack forward as we release tension in the throttle cable. And that if they both start to move at the exact same point, that's what we're wanting to see. And if they aren't, then we'll talk about that in a moment. So what I'll do is just very gingerly, I'll crack the throttle and you'll see that just barely move. So with that just slightly off of the throttle stop, I can feel with my finger and you can precisely also use a feeler gauge and feel what movement there is. So I'll reach over to the other side and I feel the exact same amount. I'm not going to feeler gauge it, usually just a little bit of movement here and on the other carburetor tells me that they're synced perfectly fine. Now a week ago when I was checking this, I found that this one was behind just a little bit. And to correct for that, there's two ways you can adjust it. If you're happy with your RPM at your low idle, then you have the choice of advancing the one that's behind or retarding the one that's ahead. I wanted to take a little bit off of my low end idle, so I left this one where it was, and I took the one that was ahead just back a little bit. And you simply loosen the nut for the cable, adjust the ferrule here to where the linkage moves the right amount, and tighten things back up. It's pretty basic. And then we'll do the same thing on full wide open. When the throttle's full wide open, this cable's lax and the carb spring is holding these both at full wide open. So just like we did at the low end, we want to slowly pull that throttle back till things just barely move. And with the throttle set to where it's just barely pulled back from wide open throttle, you could do the same thing in feeler gauge between the throttle arm and the wide open throttle stop right here. But I like to just take and just press a little bit with my finger. Both sides I can feel have the same amount of gap. And when I go to full throttle, they're both on the hard stop. So things feel right, look right, and are moving in parallel. But that's what you're looking for in a mechanical balance. And it's just a simple adjustment on either carburetor right here at this ferrule and nut to adjust them forward or backwards to get those mechanically balanced throws on your throttle arms. Simple as that. Thanks for hanging out with me working on the plane today. I hope you enjoyed the video and perhaps you learned something to help you on your Rotex 912 engine. Hit the subscribe button. There's lots more videos with tips and tricks coming soon. Thanks.